Okay, so now that we've wrapped up most of the kind of big foundational projects for the bus, the electrical, um, a lot of the plumbing, not all of it, but a lot of the plumbing um, outside, patching all the holes, um, just all, you know, all the wiring, that kind of stuff. We actually, the next step we really need to do is have the bus painted. Um, this is, we're pretty sure the original paint job um, from when the previous owners bought it from the bus company in 1979, probably had it painted 1980. Um, it has been in Arizona most, a lot of that time and just taking a beating. The clear coat is peeling off, it is chipping. There's a few places of corrosion. It needs a lot of, it needs a lot of work, um, body work, prep work before the painting can even happen. So we need to do that next because our next major project is getting the solar panels mounted on the roof and we need to do that next before we can really start tackling the interior part of the build because those mounts are going to be some of the mounts are going to be bolted through the ceiling so before we can insulate and cover up the ceiling we need to have those the panels mounted on the roof before we can mount them on the roof we want to get the roof and the bus and everything repainted so that's the next step. We are actually taking our bus to the painter next weekend and um, their estimate for us, a good estimate is four to six weeks. Um, we are really hoping it, they can get it done in that amount of time. We know it needs a lot of prep work. Um, so we're hoping it doesn't take too much longer than that and that they can, they can make that happen. But um, we don't want to just be sitting on our hands for four to six weeks. I mean, we definitely have a lot of projects on the home front in terms of getting all of our stuff cleaned out and sold and, you know, home repairs to get the house sold, things like that that we're going to be tackling, as well as tackling our mess of a garage workshop that's happened over the last year and kind of cleaning that out so that when we get the bus back, we kind of have a a clean slate, a fresh start. But one of the things we thought we could do while we don't have the bus is to figure out our solar panel mounting plans um, and kind of test out some different ways to do it. So what we're gonna do this weekend before we take the bus to the painter is to make some kind of a template of the curve of our roof so that we can play around with the mounts and how they're gonna attach with the curve of the roof. Um, since we don't have a flat roof bus or RV, it's not quite as simple. So we need to know what the exact measurements and what the exact curve are so we can plan out that mount, the mounting system. So that's what we're working on today is we're gonna take some different measurements. We've got a big piece of foam board that we're gonna use, I think, for our template. Um, so it'll be easy to cut and hopefully form the shape. So that is our project for today, is making a template of a roof. Okay, so we took our straight edge, um, we, we measured it so it would fit exactly the width of the bus, and then we rested it on the top of the metal lip of kind of the original bus sidewalls. Um, we made a support for the middle of it, and we marked with a little piece of tape every three inches along the way, and then um, one measured from here to the top of the roof um, to see what that distance was all along the way and I wrote down you know I made like a little number line and wrote down all the measurements all along the way um, and then we brought it back out here to our foam board and we lined it up made a bunch of tick marks where all of our little measuring points were and so now we're going to take our numbers and mark where that roof line is all along the way so we can actually draw then the curve of the roof and cut it out and then we should have a pretty good working template and we can check it by taking the other piece and actually taking it up onto the roof and setting it up there and see if it fits right. Um, and then what we should be able to do is take our templates and create some kind of like a wooden jig for ourselves to actually um, test with rather than just the foam. Um, so that's what we're gonna be doing next is uh, drawing our numbers on the foam board and cutting it out.
All right, so I'm up here measuring how close our template is. And it looks like it's pretty good. It's about the same amount of space under it. I could go a little closer on these corners and probably get it to fat to match pretty close. Um, I may do that just so I have peace of mind. But the part that's important is the part between this rivet line here and that rivet line there. So that part looks like it matches pretty well. It's tight right there on the corners. I don't know if that's easy to see. It's tight on the corner there and tight on the corner there. So I'll see if I can't fix that up a little bit. All right, so I tried to draw uh, with the template we have from the inside. This is a board that was in the bathroom. Um, so I'm trying to trace the template out. It looks like it's a little bit better than the one we were able to get. So I'm tracing it out. I'll cut it out and we'll see how it fits. Okay, I went ahead and trimmed the two places I marked last time. And it seems to be a much better fit. So I think that will work well enough for a template for what we need. So we're gonna call this template complete. Um, next thing is to build kind of a wood jig that simulates this curve so we can start planning out how we're going to build our solar racks. Okay, so we got the bus taken to the paint, sh to the paint shop and we have our foam template of the roof made and so now we're going to build our model of the roof so that we can start um, planning out the mounting for the solar panels while the bus is gone. So this is very a very crude drawing of kind of what we're gonna build for the model. We're just gonna take three pieces of plywood um, and then connect them with some two by fours to support it and then we can have something that mimics the curve of the roof that we can put our mounts on and see how we can make it work correctly. So. Um, we've got our three pieces of plywood just cut into rectangles, and now we are going to trace out the template. Um, we're basically making this model about the size for just one of our solar panels to fit on. And we'll explain a little bit later what our plans are for how they're going to be mounted on the roof, which is a little bit different than what we very originally thought a long time ago. So we'll explain that in just a little bit. Okay, so we've got our three pieces cut to the rooftop curve and we've marked um, a center line and then we've also marked on each end where our rails are going to go that our solar panel panels are going to be mounted to. We're um, kind of limited because one of our vents is offset just enough that we have to kind of push that rail on the other side of that vent. So that's kind of how we based um, how far away off center our rails are gonna go is to clear the vent that is for the bathroom. Um, so we've got those lines marked on two of our three boards and we're gonna line them up and use those marks to line up some two by fours to connect them there. And then we might add in a few more for some additional support and then we'll get going from there. OK, 
Okay, so we finished um, attaching all the two by fours. We put three along the bottom and three then that mimic the curve of the top. Um, this third piece of plywood, we chopped three inches off of the bottom of it so that we could slide it in between the two by fours. And now that fits, we screwed everything down. And then we've kind of just mocked up with this Unistrut rails, how these are going to sit then on the bus. This is the whole reason we kind of built this huge structure is so that we can um, see how these are going to fit. And then we can mock up how we're going to actually make solar panels flat. Now we have a couple of um, things that we need to deal with on our roof and that is our vents. We have three vents. Um, we actually, if you see some of our other videos, we do not have a rooftop air conditioner. So that's awesome. We don't have to worry about getting around that. Um, we have a mini split that's inside so all we have to deal with is our rooftop vents. And our plan is to elevate our whole array of solar panels up above our vents. And I'm gonna have Juan explain kind of our plan and how we're going to um, deal with our vents and still be able to open them and get all of our solar panels up on the roof, at least what our plan is. So we're gonna trade places right now and I'll let him explain that to you. All right, so we've got our model completed and um, so this is the part of the roof that we're going to use. And if you look real closely at the strut, you'll see there's an angle that this, it isn't exactly parallel. So we'll have to take that into consideration when we're building. Um, it's, we measured it and it's at about 11 degrees or so. So it's not an extreme angle, but it's not straight up and down either. Um, so anyway, we have the problem we have is that there, as Michelle was talking about, there are vents um, kind of there's three of the panels are going to have vents underneath them and those are the vents that we put in those max air vents so what we have is we have the inner part of the vents here so the consideration is one of the vents sits almost to the rail like that another the other two sit more like this so these are six inches tall. Our vents are about five and a half inches. So this represents a pretty close approximation of how high the panels are gonna have to sit off of this railing system. And so um, the panels are kind of heavy to uh, keep toting around. So we made this model. Now, if you'll remember when we first got the panels, we thought we were gonna mount them like this. So we thought we'd mount all of them just in a row, just like this, so that they'd be flat across, and they just that's the way they would sit. The problem is, when we actually took them up there, um, our bus curved so much that at the, at the ends of this, there was a giant gap. And so we thought, uh, maybe that's just not the best way to do it. So now, what we want to do is do them this way. So like this. Um, and so the problem here is, now we can only fit four panels. So we have eight panels that we intend on using. So what we decided to do was a layered approach, where there's one panel above the other one. So this would represent the bottom panel here, and it would sit up that high, and then right above it, there would be another set of four panels. So it would be four panels, and then up a little bit, and then four panels again. So how are the bottom ones gonna get uh, sun? So what we intend to do is build a slide system where these would slide out like this. And so when it's fully extended, this would slide all the way out and be about hang off about halfway across the entire bus. So there would be half on the bus and then half over, kind of over the canopy. So that's the plan for now. So that's the reason that we decided to create this mock-up and to try to um, get all of this sort of in a semi, you know, reasonably stable way so we could work on how are we gonna design these slides and how are we gonna design the upper deck and get them all to clear things like this. So 
that's the plan and that's why we built all this. So the next video will show um, kind of how we're working on this and how we're building this up, how the slides will work and things like that. So uh, stay tuned for that.